Hello again, ladies and gentlemen, Saka here with another episode of Kerbal Space Program 1.2 Career Mode. When we last left off, Bob, our scientist, brought back a lot of amazing science. Let me show you what I unlocked. I unlocked electronics, uh, such as the seismic accelerometer, which we can land. We also have um, some... Uh, more another a stack separator, a shielded docking port, the nuclear engine, which is pivotal in going to Duna and Eve, uh, more fuel tanks, bigger rockets, the whole nine yards. And I have a pretty good rocket for us here. If I was to load up my autosave ship and let's put Valentina on board. Um, looking at the vessel, it is set up almost Apollo style. Uh, we have a massive bottom section here of orange tanks with mainsail engines on the bottom with a skipper uh, providing the main thrust here. Also in our lander section we have uh, solar panels and docking legs. Um, also we have uh, RCS thrusters to help us dock these two ships together in orbit. But uh, without further ado, let us make for the moon. We don't want to go uh, too vicious. The struts should hopefully hold our rocket middle section together. Uh, let's have Valentina pro hold prograde there until we get through uh, maximum dynamic pressure. Let's go ahead and pick up the throttle some. Uh, this is a pretty stable uh, spacecraft to get to the moon with. I did test it out. All right, let's hold stability assist. We don't want to follow the prograde marker down. We just want to sort of punch through. It's a pretty stable craft. I, I really enjoy flying it. Um, it doesn't flip out too badly. Seems to be weighted just right. Um, come on, Valentina, hold it together there as, as I brag about you. Luckily, this uh, these mainsail engines have some strong gimbals to them, which allows us to uh, keep the rocket steering in the correct fashion. All right, here we go. Let's turn back prograde. Uh, now that we are getting out of the thick part of the atmosphere, we can really pick up speed and uh, we want to be as fast as we can for uh, the skipper to kick in because it doesn't pack the punch that the uh, other, that the mainsails do. We want to be really hauling the mail to help this guy out. See, we separate and it's still, it's slowing down a bit, but we are still gaining altitude, which is all the important. 62,000. Actually, it looks like we can sort of level out, so I will do so. Um, let's. There we go. Now the orbit is leveling a bit. We want to keep our thrust vector positive over the blue, but we don't want to go much higher than 70. Uh, we really want to use this uh, to gain lateral speed as much as we can because. This engine isn't exactly the most powerful. It's really efficient. Uh, it'll burn for a very long time, but um, it, it won't speed us up that quickly. So we need to make sure that we are using the Earth's, well, Kerbin's rotation as much as possible to get a nice solid orbit here. I'm trying to get the, uh, the thrust vector right on the 90, so I'm a little north of the 90. Well, I guess it would be south in this case. Uh, to sort of pull this orbit back down. Um, looks like we're at 80,000 on the top. Let me really start to tug this guy down. Try to get this uh, orbit as flat as I can. We really don't want to be using our, our rockets to be increasing our altitude anymore. We want it to really increase our speed. So the more we can point to the horizon, the better. We don't want to catch up on our apoapsis, however, um, and it looks like we are catching up just a bit. If that is indeed the case, uh, we will need to uh, point upwards just a touch. But as long as we're riding about a minute behind it, we are being pretty efficient. Let's go prograde and really uh, follow our thrust vector through. And you can sort of see our altitude increasing here but we really don't want it to increase that much. I'll point down to the horizon, sort of get this thing near the horizon as I can and really get the speed going. 
So we'll in be increasing our altitude just a touch, but we are using most of our thrust for lateral speed. There we go. Let's just hold that right there. Take a look at our rocket and we are nearly sideways. We are using all of our thrust. Valentina seems to be in control. And let's turn on our lights because I attached the solar panels and these command lights to the light action group. So now we've got some solar panels providing some power for us. All right, still behind our apoapsis, we're sort of pushing it along. And once we get a parry on the other side of the planet, uh, we'll be able to plot our uh, transmuner insertion. Now I looked at my contracts and I thought docking two vessels in orbit would be easy because I'm technically carrying two vessels on me, but I tried it in a test run and it did not count. So I'm just going to use this whole stage as a true uh, translunar insertion stage. And then we will do the, um, the, the flip, the command module flip uh, once we get further out towards the moon. Okay, here we go. The periaps is rising for us. Let's go ahead and stop that there. 94,000 meters. We can just finalize our circularization right here. Just a touch of speed, prograde, is all we need. 18 meters a second. Uh, that is one second. All right, here we go. Let's just turn on stability assist and get Valentina pointed on the marker. Flying over some land mass now. Our, our lunar space program is in full effect. Essentially what we are going to do is plant a flag on the moon, of course get science data from space around the moon, uh, and that will complete two of our contracts. Plus we'll get some world first for landing on the moon, planting a flag, and all that good malarkey. So it should be a good time. All right, let's speed her up. We only need a one second burn, so as we come around the planet, there's the moon there. Uh, we're going to be just a little late. We're not doing our, our lunar insertion yet. We're sort of circularizing. However, we could have went for broke. We could have just kept right on going, but I'm not comfortable doing such things as that. All right, let's go prograde. Four, three, two, one, full burn and cut. All right. I think that is all we needed to circularize. 93 and 94. Tell me about it. All right, let's go to the moon and set as our target. How is our inclination? Negative 1.4 degrees. We could tidy that up or we don't have to waste the fuel. Let's just, let's just do it. Let's just go. Let's do this thing. All right, we don't need that much gusto. Let's point her right over here. All right, looks like, here we go. Yeah, we, do, we don't need much. We can fine tune our approach just a little bit so we can get uh, maximum efficiency out of this thing. We'll keep turning towards the moon and then slowing down. Let's see, that's uh, 152,000 meters, 254. Let's give it a little bit more speed here 137 I mean that should be good it's a daylight burn 43,000 meters that's that's our jam right there it's going to be a 1 minute 26 second burn so essentially 45 seconds uh, let me go ahead and get on the marker before we time warp to the next maneuver so I'm just essentially uh, rotating our rocket down there to our maneuver node. And then right when it's on the maneuver, I will warp to the next maneuver and we will be all set. And go. Warping to the next maneuver. We will see you next time. Bye, moon. We will de do our translunar insertion. Then we will uh, separate our command capsule from our lander. We'll put it on its nose and then push it um, Apollo, you know, Apollo mission style. Here we come back around. Seven minutes to go. It's the next morning on Kerbin and we are ready to fire. 
All right, essentially 45 seconds is what we need and we are almost there. Let's go ahead and tell Valentina to get prograde for us. Seven, six, burn, full speed, hold stability. Right there, Valentina. That's exactly what we need, right there. I believe we can get away with most of the burn uh, with this section. And if we run out of fuel here, uh, we'll essentially be on our way. We can still do our uh, command capsule flip, grab our lander, and then finish the maneuver with the command, uh, command capsule. I have a poodle engine right here, which is really efficient for this size of fuel tank uh, as our command engine. And then I have uh, the terrier engine as an engine for our lander, which is a design that I've done several times in Kerbal Space Program and I'm pretty happy with. So we will keep on keeping on. Luckily, we are burning toward uh, sunlight, so our solar panels are in full swing and full view. Yep, we might not be able to finish the burn, but we will be close enough for government work, I believe. All right, the fuel is almost gone. Couldn't have planned this TLI better if I tried. All right, here we go. Let's slow it down and cut the throttle. Where does that put us in the grand scheme of things? Still a little bit more burning to do, so let's get Valentina um, burning on the prograde here. There we go, Periaps is dropping 200. 53,000 meters should do us. Um, 50,000 is a good altitude to be at for the lander. And I believe we're ready to go. Um, I'll use this section to slow down a bit or what I could do is I could get cheeky and make sure there's no debris. What I'll do is I will burn prograde until we smash into the moon like that. And then I will go ahead and undock and this boy will slam into the moon and we will be ready to, uh, to go. So let's go ahead and decouple from our main engine. And now what we will do is we will decouple from the uh, stack decoupler. And then we will decouple the brand decoupler here. And that sort of sent our lander into a tizzy. What I can do is EVA a Kerbal over there to get, um, to get it nice and snug, to get everything uh, focused. No, 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 don't stability assist. What are you doing? What I want to do is set that as my target and then go ahead and stability assist on you right here and then I can EVA with Valentina to get inside that um, lunar lander and get it nice and stable for us all right Valentina time to make the daring space walk Oops, where are you at? Where are you at? What are you doing? All right, the camera is being difficult. This thing is flipping around on me. Looks like we're gonna have to, uh, to grab hold and try this again. Valentina, why you know? Okay, it's still set as the target. Uh, we can move a little bit closer to it, at least arrest the movement. So we'll go RCS thrusters, we'll move forward. There we go. Essentially now we are moving towards it at 0.2 meters a second. And if we're lucky, it may, it may just turn around for us. That would be ideal. Wouldn't even really have to do anything. Let's speed up. Let's get there and see if that is actually a thing it can do. Just a touch of RCS to, to center ourselves. We're approaching at a half a meter a second here. I think it'll be okay. It's almost sort of lining up for us. No, it's sort of turning away now. If anything, we can park it right next to it and be fine. 
Remember, the important thing is not to panic whenever you're uh, docking. As long as they're relatively in the same, uh, at the same speed, there's no rush. I mean, we've got like three days before we get to the moon. This is not a bad deal at all. All right, so what we will do then, it looks like it's spinning. I could get cheeky, and when it spins around to face us, I can do the uh, time acceleration. Let's point it right there. And then once it gets into uh, to time acceleration, it'll freeze with the uh, docking port right in front of us. And then we'll be in like a dirty shirt. Yeah, there we go. Let's just come to a parking orbit here. We're moving at 0.1 meters a second, and then whenever it faces us, we'll freeze it, and then we'll just nudge right on up to it and call it an episode. Hi, Moon. We're coming at you, boy. Now turn the RCS off. We don't want to thrust. We essentially want to be pointed at the docking port, so it, that is indeed our target. And then once it comes around, we can go ahead and start moving forward. And then once we get nosed in, do a quick time acceleration freeze. And now we're lined up. Just get her right on the ball and let the magnets do the work. Here we go at 0.2 meters a second. Uh, the magnet should have no problem getting this guy, um, getting him on point. So I don't need, uh, there it goes. It pulls it in, no stability, uh, SCS or RCS, and now we are connected. What we'd like to do now is activate this engine, and then we want to control from here. That pod, make sure that we're facing this way, and we're all set. We have ourselves a full fuel tank, a full uh, lunar lander. It probably wouldn't hurt for us to uh, to point outward just a touch and get away from the moon. Add a maneuver and let's just speed up a touch. So yeah, 28,000 may be a touch too, uh, a touch too much, 124, somewhere in there. We can fine tune 111, 96. So a very minuscule amount of delta V. Matter of fact, let's just um, burn or turn on our RCS, and then we will burn retrograde here. Let's just kill the maneuver node. We're just uh, essentially slowing down with our RCS thrusters. We're burning backwards. And we should start seeing a periaps here. Essentially what I'm doing is uh, I'm just using the R RCS thrusters like I would just regular thrusters. And that should get us to where we need to go. Alright, it's being a little difficult. Where do I need to go here? So six more meters a second is what we need and we need to burn backwards, there we go. So essentially, even though I'm facing retrograde, I'm using the reverse engines in retrograde to get the, uh, to get the desired effect. Because I don't want to turn on my engines until we get to the moon, but it may not be a bad idea to just do a quick blast of full throttle to get the engine calibrated. We can do that. So, uh, our engine should be on. Let's just do, there we go, full blast, full power, right there for a moment. All right. 52. There we go, we are on our way. Everything is looking good. In the next episode, we'll go ahead and get uh, some data from the moon. 
uh, some scientific data from around the orbit of the moon. We will plant the flag on the moon and we will return with our intrepid Kerbals. But until then, this has been Sokka. Like, share, and subscribe if you are so bold. And for Valentina, Bill, and Bob, thanks for tuning in. See ya, Orange Fuel Tank. <laughs>